many of you probably don't know me. My name is Valentin and I've been making VR War Thunder content for almost one year now. But I've been a War Thunder VR player for almost two years, playing exclusively in VR. Today I'll show you how to enable DOAA in War Thunder, so you have a much more smoother and better VR experience. If you really just want to get straight into the tutorial and you don't care about the rest or what I'll talk about, there are timestamps below so you can jump right to that part. But I do recommend to stick around because I want to explain how I actually came across this finding. Since the very beginning, I've played War Thunder without anti-aliasing. In the 2D version of the game, there are many anti-aliasing options for people who play on flat screen. But in VR, we're actually very limited. FXAA fast and FXAA quality do not work in VR, no matter what people will tell you. Our other options was temporal anti-aliasing, or TAA for short, but almost nobody uses it because it introduces a lot of ghosting and it's quite memory intensive. Then we have deep learning super sampling or DOSS, which on paper looks great and on flat screen it works well. It also works in VR, but it's very GPU demanding, even on something like a 5090, with an average performance hit of around 40-45% to 45 in the FPS. Then there is Templar Super Resolution or TSR, which recently actually got updated. It only has about 10% performance hit, but that comes at a cost of everything looking slightly blurry, especially helmet mounted displays and multifunction displays look a little bit blurry while you're using it. So the best option and what most of the VR community uses until now was simply not using anti-aliasing at all. Even in my optimization video and in the PDF that I made for VR optimizations on the official word on the wiki, I actually recommended playing without anti-aliasing. But playing without anti-aliasing comes with a cost, and that's shimmering. That's when pixels in the distance start flickering. When flying high in the sky, that's not always very noticeable. And to reduce the flickering, I recommended increasing your VR resolution so when you get compressed down to the headset's native resolution, you're basically oversampling the image. And while shimmering was still there, the performance hit was nowhere near as bad as using any of the anti-aliasing options I mentioned earlier. But oh boy, was I wrong. In the last few days, I've been testing a theory of mine. Something I came across while testing how DOSS works in other games. And I came to a very interesting conclusion. The big performance hit was happening because we were forcing the game in VR to run DOSS. And based on how War Thunder renders things, that fixed the environment around us, but also introduced ghosting on the UI elements. So I decided to dig deeper. By default, War Thunder only have few DOSS options. Native, quality, performance and ultra performance. What's happening under the hood is that the game renders everything at a lower resolution and then upscales it to match your monitor resolution. And because the game renders the UI elements based on your monitor resolution, not your headset's resolution, none of the presets work properly in VR. If you're curious about that, there's a link in the description to my PDF guide where I explain this in more detail. Now, many of us assumed that DOSS on native was actually using another DOSS mode called Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing or DOA for short. But guess what? That's not the case. Simply put, DOAA renders the game at full native resolution, both your game and your VR headset, and then uses AI only to remove the jagged edges and shimmering without upscaling. And it does this while preserving the native sharpness of your image. In many other games, DOAA is a separate option and a lot of us had the impression that DOAA already worked in War Thunder because it solves the main issue we all have in VR, shimmering. And right when I was testing all of this, NVIDIA decided to release DOSS 4.5. So I knew I had to try this in game. So today I'll show you how to brute force DOAA into War Thunder to get proper anti-aliasing in VR. I also coordinated my findings with one of the Gaijin's community managers and showed him how to test this himself and hopefully we'll see this properly implemented for VR players in the future. But if you want to test this right now, I'll walk you through everything you need to do to run War Thunder in DOAA mode. Now, keep in mind, at the time of making this video, War Thunder still uses DOSS 4.3 and because War Thunder has a live anti-cheat, the NVIDIA app will not allow you to swap the DOSS version directly in the game. However, there's a workaround and I'll talk about that in a second. Right now, you can use DOAA with the current version of DOSS 4.3, even in multiplayer matches, because the change we will make is on the NVIDIA driver level. It will not modify the game files and it will not trigger the anti-cheat. However, if you want to test the DOSS 4.5 before Gaijin officially implements it, I'll show you how to do that in test flight. Just keep in mind, if you're trying to join a multiplayer match, the game will automatically remove the DOSS 4.5 and revert back to version 4.3. But in test flights, the game will still work with DOSS 4.5 unless you join a match in multiplayer and then you 
how to swap the DOSS all over again. All right, let's get into it. Before we can swap DOSS 4.5, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have the latest drivers from NVIDIA. Make sure you have NVIDIA app downloaded and then go to drivers and make sure you have the latest game driver downloaded and ready to go. In this case, this is version 591.74 from January 5th, 2026. Next, in settings, in about, make sure that you opt in uh, to access to the better experimental features. This will update your NVIDIA app to version 11.06.374. This is quite necessary in order to get this to work properly. So, let's enable the DOA inside War Thunder. First, we're going to need NVIDIA Profile Inspector. After a simple Google search, you get to the GitHub page over here. So we're going to go here, we're going to scroll down, and you're going to find the latest version of the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Download the file and unzip it. After you unzip everything, you should see this over here. This is the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Keep this somewhere on your drive and just run it. It will ask you to run as administrator because it needs driver level access. Just click yes. And here you're going to be presented with this. This is actually the NVIDIA inspector. This allows you to control everything on a driver level for your NVIDIA GPUs. If you're using an AMD GPU, I'm sorry, this guide will probably not help you. But at least for everybody running an RTX GPU, this should totally work for you. Here, first, we're going to want to change a few things. Over here in the search bar, you want to write view bar. This is a feature that we want to enable in the global profile section. This basically allows our GPU and CPU to communicate much more faster. And since we're going to be using DOAA for War Thunder, I would highly recommend you to enable this. Inside of the PDF, there's much more detailed information about how this actually works, where I explain in detail how rebar works. So the main things that you should be aware of is inside of War Thunder, you want to use DX12 as runtime and here you want to enable resizable bar for resizable bar options you want to select red Dead redemption and for resizable bar limit you want to set this to 0.4 next here in the profile section we're going to write war thunder and in the search bar we're going to write dlss here on dlss forced preset letter select always use latest and on dlss force quality level make sure you have selected DOAA and all you need to do now is press apply changes. Now that we've done this, I would first recommend you to leave the anti-cheat on if you're planning to play in multiplayer with DOSS 4.3 that we have right now, but leaving this on like this will still keep your DOAA feature enabled since we've changed that into the driver level of NVIDIA. All you need to do now in VR is make sure that in the game launcher of War Thunder, VR is toggled on and just press play. If you're playing on Steam, just make sure that you run the game directly in VR. Now that we're already in the game, the last thing you need to do is go to the top options, graphics, and in anti-aliasing method, make sure you have selected DOSS 4 and just press OK. Now you can go into a test flight and see how this looks. Even with this, the ghosting is quite lower and everything is quite visible and you should be running the game with a stable FPS as before. Currently I'm running at 90 FPS and I don't get any performance hits on my experience. But for everyone curious how we can run War Thunder with DOSS 4.5, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. In order to use DOSS version 4.5, First, we need to go to Google and just perform a simple DOSS Swapper search. After you find it, just click on DOSS Swapper Download and download it. I personally use the installed version. Once we launch DOSS Swapper, here you will be able to find your War Thunder game. Click on it and it will show you the current version of DOSS that's being used in the game. What you want to do is click on DOSS here and find version 3.10.5 and click download. Once the download is complete, press swap, then repeat the same thing for select DOSS frame generation version. Make sure that you have 3.10.5 uh, selected and click, click swap. Finally, make sure you press reload and now you can close this. It's very important when you run the game now, make sure you launch the game directly into VR. If you're using virtual desktop, go into the games tab inside of your VR headset and run War Thunder through there. If you're using MetaQuest Link, 
try to launch the game through your MetaQuest directly, so the game will run directly into VR. This way the anti-cheat will not trigger the overwrite of the DOSS. And now I'll hop in back into the game and I'll show you the, uh, that we already swapped to DOSS 4.5. As you can see, our game just swapped our DOSS 4 to version 4.5. For final notes, on the upscaling mode, do not change this. If you do, it will override the DOLA function that we changed into the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. So all you have to do now is go and have some fun in the test flight. And let me know in the description of this video, does this help you to try it out? And what do you think about DOSS 4.5? And does this make War Thunder better for you in VR? And to finish on a positive note, I'm going to show you some highlights from one of my community members while he was tweaking those settings that I showed him to get a proper VR experience inside of War Thunder. My okay, my biggest problem with it, where there's no motion blur. There's none of that smearing that happens with DLSS. Yes. Holy shit. That's a man. Yeah. I can actually spot targets. At range at that. Overall, what do you think? Oh, I am very happy. I appreciate it, man. I can't wait to play more of this later. Just you have opened my eyes to 4.5.